Doing great. Oh man, well, let's start this off. Whose house? Whose house? I said, whose house? Well, let's give him some praise, dude. Man, oh, where to start? Oh, uh, wow. Today's your graduation, man. I'm, uh, I'm excited, man. Uh, now I get to take what I've learned from the house and take it into the world. I feel like if you keep doing the same things every day that's working for you, you're gonna be okay. Amen. Prayer push up Proverbs. Wake up in the morning, pray. Read your Bible. When I came out of prison, man, uh, I had nothing. I mean, I had a little something. I had a nice neat coat, a little pair of shoes, and one pair of jeans. Never thought within just nine months I'd have such a nice car, yeah. such nice clothes. Uh, money in the bank and money in my pocket. Uh, I couldn't do it without God, man. man. God's there every step of the way. Uh, Pastor Vic, Miss Irene, um, thank y'all for helping keep me on track, not letting me give up and not giving up on me. Um, my friend told me that this Christian walk is the narrow path. It's not an easy walk. If it was easy, it would be the wide road. So. Guys, I just want to encourage y'all that um, when the house gets tough and you feel like giving up, don't. Get your knees and pray. Talk to God. My favorite verse in the Bible is um, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. Amen. If you seek God, everything else is in the bag. Just like I told you, Mike. Don't worry about no shoes. If God's going to, you know, clothe the field in such beautiful flowers, that's just something that's going to go away tomorrow. How much does he care about you, man? Everything's going to come to you, man. Just seek his face. Um, we don't even know what to else to say, man. I'm glad it's here. Man, thank you. Thank you to all my friends and my people for supporting me. Man. I appreciate it. I love y'all. And uh, Pastor V, you ain't been up there to eat at the Olive Garden yet. Got something for you. Olive Garden. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it, man. Let's go to let's go quickly to Philippians. Philippians. Great, great chapter here, Philippians. Philippians chapter four. I'm gonna do a quick brief. You know, and in, 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 in this Philippians, what we what we're going on. You know, it's called trusting in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord. With all you've been through and all you're going through, you you was going through something and you and you couldn't find nobody to trust. Everything that was in your way, bricks got through at you, doors got locked, curtains got closed, you lost your job, you lost your wife, you lost your family, kids won't speak to you. Man, like I got the pastor say one time, the dog even start speaking to you. You know, this is the taste. But when you trust in the Lord, Amen. when you trust in the Lord, yes, come on. he has all to give you, brothers Amen. and sisters. Amen. Amen. Philippians chap chapter 4. Let's go to verse, let's go to verse 13. Verse 13. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens Amen. me. That strengthened me. You know, brothers and sisters, this is great. When I was trying to get my life together, when I was just going through so many stages of, uh, um, I don't know where I was at or what I was just dealing with. And, 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 you know, even though people was telling me who God and who Christ was, I wasn't trying to hear that. I just wanted to still be me. I want, you know, how you say you want your cake, you want your cake and ice cream and eat it too, but it always don't go like that. You just always can have your cake and ice cream and eat it too. Sometimes it just has to be the cake. Sometimes it just has to be the cake. You know, you have to start to realize this in life. It has to be time of life change come upon you. Where, where are you going? What are you doing? What is your life plan? Who's in front of you? Who are you serving? Who are you praising? You know, and, and, and that's when all the time you, a bell should ring off and rings off in each one of my head. I had enough of this here. I had enough of being out of this world. I had enough of being out in these streets. I want to change. You know, Amen. I'm going to call on this Jesus. This Jesus that who can save me. And he said, he said that he can make my life be better and productive by living under him and acknowledge him that Jesus is Lord. 
you know, and, and, and that's the great thing about that. And then once you get into it, that Jesus is Lord, this intimate relationship that comes upon you, that you got to have an intimate relationship, and you got to want this change in this process. In this process, I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. Amen. In this process, you got to start thinking: Where do I grow? Where do I where do I start at? First, trusting in the Lord. You got to have trust in somebody. You done failed in everything that you did. Family not dealing with you. Oh. Look here. Job can let you go. Mm. Shoot. Everywhere you go, it's, it's chaos. Now the enemy even hates you. You know, this is cold blood. The enemy even comes to hate you in these areas. This is where that change comes up. I need you, Jesus. I need to trust in the Lord. You know, this is the change that, and that, that I want, that I seek for, that I go after now in life. That, you know, whatever it takes to take me or wherever you're sending me, you know, I need it. I trust you. I trust you. And I depend on your strength to get me where I need to go. You know, like, you know, one thing about this God that said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me, that he said, first, trust in me, take that walk. Take that walk. When he say, when he mean about taking that walk, and I can do all things, take that walk, I got a place where you're going. You don't know where you're going, but you know if you, if, if, if you can do all things that Christ has stripped you, he's going to direct you in the path where you need to go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, and I always acknowledge him to direct your path. You know, Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 4, that's a good deal. On top of that, check this out. This is what's good even in that part of the scripture. We're going, we're going to stay on the same philosophy here now. And, it's, and now, in this Proverbs, I just jumped over there for a second to share this with you. How is the line number we're talking about here? That, that, that verse 4, so shall I find favor in God and man. Man, even though you, they call you a nothing and nobody, he still seen favor in you. Yeah. He's seen a change that you couldn't even see in yourself. This is what this God has, has, has done. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. This is what you have to start acknowledging and seeing what he can do, how he can make you more back to productive. That you, that he increased, that you decrease. You know, that, that's John 3.30. You know, it ain't about what I know, it's how I have seen and he has performed in my life. On, you know, when you was, you was dead, you was dead, and he brought life back to you because you chose to change in your life. This is what goes on when you start trusting in the Lord. You know, I can do all things through Christ to me. Then I'm depending on him now. Now he's allowing to give me his strength, depend on me. I depend for him. And this is what I expect. And this is what I want. But in this process, I, it's humbling come down. Come it's stepping in healing mation. And then, this is so awesome that this God is so awesome. I can do all things to Christ to strengthen me. He started putting people over you to see where you really at with him. Is you really depending on his strength? Is you really leaning on his strength? You got a plan. But he has a bigger plan for you. If you just humble yourself down and let me show you, sisters and brothers, I can show you where I can take you. I can take you to eternal life that you never ever seen, that you never die, that you live, you're in peace, that you can give him all glory. Check this out. We're gonna go a little further here. In the same chapter, verse 19, but God supply all my needs according to the riches and the glory of Jesus Christ. First of all, Amen. Jesus died for you. He died for you. He already had a plan. You might didn't think a plan was there, but a plan was already there. You might think you got to where you are, but you didn't. He did. He supplied all your needs. He supplied all the people that he put in your life in the changes. See, this, this is what he does. This is what he does. Psalms 140, Psalms 140, deliver me from the evil man, but preserve me from the violent man. Mm -hmm. So what he has done, he has delivered you from all that you were dealing with because you called on him. He supplied all my needs. Check this out. And when he supplied your needs, he rerouted you and orchestrated better people that honor and praise him, that glorified him. And in this process, the people that he changed, that he brought to you, been through what you've been through. It might be different, but it's the same thing. At the time you was calling on him, somebody else was calling on him too. But what happened, they came through, but you came after, but my God supplies all my needs mm -hmm. according to the riches. Amen. His riches of Christ. And that you needed this, that you wanted this change. 
It ain't about the money, it ain't about the finances, it ain't about the clothes. But the riches of eternal life that you seek, that you go after. Yes. Yes. Riches is smiling. Riches is helping somebody. Yes. Riches is telling the brother and saying, and don't have a smile, hey brother. You know what? I'm gonna smile and pray, I got you. Or telling the brother that's down and ain't got it going on, brother, you, you, you up here. You're not down there. This is called riches. Sharing and loving the next person that's going through something, that's riches. That is riches and glory. This God that we call now, Christ Jesus, that we weren't even worthy of him, stood by us, did everything for us, died, took a beating, took a lick, took a hit. But the idea of he still stuck with us till he knew this is what he did know. That one day we come through. Amen. That we come through, that we recognize He's God, he's God all by himself. Yeah. Through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. That you've been redeemed from the hands of the enemy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. He gave you, and then he revolt everybody that you deal with. He changes your friends. He brings everybody in your path that's on peace. On peace mode. That, that acknowledge him, that glorifies him. This is the change that you look that he does. And then he brings you to a humble place. Are, re are restoring you, restoring you, to humble you down. You know this. This, this is this is a great. This is a great one right here. The twenty third number. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. In green pastures, He brought you away to sit you down, mm -hmm. quiet you, get yourself together, Amen. clean you up from all what you're dealing with, accessing everything that's from around you that you just focus on Christ. This is the walk that you take. This is what he offered you. But it's your decision how you want to live. But when you asked him that you wanted out of what you was going through, and then you, 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 you asked him, he brought you out. Amen. This is the commercial. I always talk about this commercial. I talk about this commercial. I love this commercial. Commercial call is a life commercial. About these three little boys. Two of them sitting there saying, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to try. I'm not. Let's get Mikey to try. He hates everything. Check this out. Micah took three scoops. He likes it. He likes it. And the father, son, Holy Ghost, he took three scoops. Three scoops of how much he liked it. That's the taste that you can get from the Holy God through Christ Jesus. Amen. Just try it. And watch the change and the transformation come in your life. Amen. And the production of what he can do for you, how he does it. Man, praise his holy name. You know, I didn't have too much to say, but I wanted to share that with my brother Brad. And where you at now? Stand firm. Stand strong. Mm -hmm. He's supplying all your needs. Amen. To his riches and the glory. Now you're in glory. But it's how you pursue it. How you stay on it. How you live it. Do you direct, do you follow his path? You stay on his path, it ain't nothing can stop you. Man, you're a soldier in the army of God through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Even when we don't understand that there's a process going in our lives, mm. waiting. Is always worth it. Amen. Amen. Waiting is always worth it. Because when you wait on the Lord, all good things come. Amen. 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 Give God glory in the house. Well, I'm going to be coming out of Philippians 2 tonight. Amen. But I'm in chapter 1 today. And uh, I like when they get it stirred up in here. But we're going to tag team you tonight. Amen. The mighty name yeah. of Jesus. Are y'all good out there tonight? Give God glory in the house. Yeah. I want to hear this shake them up tonight. Amen. Tonight is a glorious night. Amen. Yeah. Because one of our brothers has gone through a process. Amen. And one amen. of them is, has been waiting for something good to happen. Amen. And as he, as he shared his testimony, a lot of good things has happened. Amen. Yeah. And so I hope that he continues encouraging. So I wrote something that I was reading, I was studying on tonight, amen. amen. And you know, I want to share a little bit. You know, we spend a lot of time, amen, waiting and waiting. Waiting in line, waiting for news, waiting for good news, waiting right. for bad news. Come on, somebody. Right. Amen. Waiting for the next season of life. But don't you know that God is working in your waiting? Through your waiting, through you wait, you're waiting for something. There's a process, and I'm gonna take it to Daniel's story later. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. Through the waiting, God is. We can't see what God is doing, but God is working in your life. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. 
even particularly through times of difficulty and periods of personal growth, but there's a plan and a purpose in all of it. Even through our trials, through our hard times, something God is at work. Are y'all with me tonight? Amen. See, God can see things that we can't. And he can see things that need to be ironed out in our hearts and in our lives. Can I get an amen? amen. That would only remain creased and messy if it wasn't for the refining times of waiting. Are y'all with me? To encourage those who may be waiting, whether through a long, drawn-out process in their own personal life, or in issues that they're going through, God is saying, I'm still here. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I see what you're doing. You know, I see you on your knees praying. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Yeah. Philippians 1, chapter 1, uh, verse 6 tells us, Being confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? That's some word for us tonight, amen. And, you know, I want to acknowledge my family here tonight, amen, and the visitors tonight, amen. You know, thank y'all for being here tonight. We, we love y'all, amen. We, you know, we got to acknowledge my son is a minister now. You know, the Bible says give due honor to those who are honored, amen. So let's give the minister a hand tonight, amen. I'm working on him. I hope I can be like Elijah told Elijah told Elijah when you leave. You know, when I see the fire coming, amen, I see the fiery horses and the chariot, amen, and the whirlwind of fire, he said, just throw down the fire to me. Just throw down your cloak. Let me get a double portion of you, amen. My God, it's coming. It's coming, son, amen, in the mighty name of Jesus. The apostle begins, and I wrote something small for you, and I'm going to keep you all night, amen. The apostle Paul begins his verse with a statement of great confidence, amen. If you read back a little bit on there. He was talking to the Philippians Christians, amen, but he was also talking to the body of Christ, amen. Now we know while salvation from the penalty of sin happens at the moment a person accepts Christ, amen, true, amen, can I get an amen? Amen. But the process of becoming more like Christ is exactly that, a process, amen. You see, we can complete many goals in life. Brother Leonard, Mr. Thomas, amen. I, I got to call him by his name, Thomas Leonard, amen. I'm not going to leave that Thomas out, amen, because they forget who he is, amen. I'm trying to remind them who he is, amen, amen, my God. You see, we can complete many goals in life and not even know that we're going through a process, a process of character change. You know, we don't understand how we really are inside until we go through the process. Amen. What character is this? Who am I? Yes, I, I accomplished a couple of goals. I, you know, I, yes, I, I, I'm completing some things, some tasks, amen. I'm moving up the chain, but God is saying, wait a minute, you've completed your task, but now I want you to walk in my ways. My God, I'm talking to somebody tonight. Can I get an amen? amen. Becoming more like Christ is the process even though we feel we have accomplished a major milestone, God is saying you have accomplished your assignment, but now I want you to focus on me, the process of being like me. Come on, somebody. Amen. He's saying I want you to let go of all that stuff that you're still hanging on to. You know, you're accomplishing some things, but you're still holding on to the old man. My God, I'm talking to somebody tonight. Some of us say, you know, I believe in you, God. You know, I, I, I can't wait till you come. Right. Come back. I, I'll be made whole in righteousness, the Bible tells us. Amen. But it seems like it's taking forever. We say, you know what, God? You know, I, I've been praying and I've been going through some trials. And, and you, you said if I come to know you, you know, things are going to get better. Right. Oh, tell me where it says that, my God. How many years have I been struggling with this same character defect? Living like a heathen. Come on, somebody. And we say to ourselves, well, I thought everything would change immediately the moment I gave my life to Christ. When I started this program, when I came into the home, you know, when I started 
you know, listening to God. Come on, somebody, y'all with me tonight? Amen. And we say to ourselves, you know, wait a minute. The more I give myself to Christ, the more I give myself to God, the more battles come my way. But through the process, it seems that the struggle became harder. I can't do it, we say. But you know, the devil is a liar because my Bible says that we can do all things yes, through amen, Christ amen. who strengthens me. Come on, somebody. Amen. amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Oh, I don't hear no glory in this house tonight. Amen. I'm going to mess up in here if y'all make me mess up. At first, you felt the love and forgiveness God surrounded you with. Amen. amen. Brothers who loved you. Then the trial started coming from every angle and every victory you had in Jesus' name. Just to open up another door to another battle. Amen. Can I get an amen, Lynn? Amen. The more your eyes open to your sins and the effects it had to your soul, the more you can't realize how much work there still is to be done in you. You see, when God begins to open up your eyes and say, you know what, you're looking, go, man, you know what, I look good, I look better. But you, God is saying, no, you look better. But there's still something inside you that you got to get rid of. My God, I'm talking to somebody. The more your eyes are open to your sins, the more defects you, you see. You probably got discouraged a couple of times. I'm talking to the brothers too, amen. You probably got discouraged or still do. And probably you, you gave up many times thinking, there's no way. I'm too messed up. This home isn't for me. Oh, we're getting quiet up in here now. Y'all better say the home is for me. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm in a good place today. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because the Bible says that those who hear bad news, they don't do nothing to the men of God. Come on, somebody. Amen. You see, we go through these countless trials, but it's funny how we don't realize that every single time we go through the fire, we come out on the other side more refined than we were before. See, God begins to see you, realize and start to see yourself, brothers and sisters, that when you go through these trials and you go through these storms, you go through the fire, you come out better on the other side. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Isaiah 48, 10. I'm going to take y'all there real quick. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because I got to back this up with the word. The Bible tells us, I'm going to go to 9. He said, for my own sake, I delay my wrath. For the sake of my praise, I hold it back from you. So as not to cut you off. Because he's working on you. Come on, somebody. He said, I can bring my wrath because you pretend that you're doing better. And, and, and you've accomplished some things. But I should send my wrath to take you out. Oh, my God. Help me, Holy Ghost. He said, but see, he says, see, I have refined you, though not as silver, I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. My God. He said, for my own sake, for my own sake, I do this. How can I, how can I let myself be defamed? My God. He said, I'm the one that's famous around here. I don't even know. Him. Come on, somebody. He said, I will not yield my glory to another. Because he's telling us that when you come out on the other side, when he put you through the test. Mm -hmm. You see, the process that we're going through is a test. He said, this is why I got to turn it up. Because I'm going to test you through the furnace of afflictions. I'm going to see how when it hurts a little bit, when it's hard, when you don't like it, I'm going to see if you run or you're going to give me praise. My God. Come on, Amen. somebody. Oh, I don't hear no glory in the house. You see, if we look closely, we will find out that a specific area of character has been totally changed. Depending on the nature of what battle that you're battling with, and, and what you're per persevering through. Amen? Amen. And I'm talking about characteristics that defined us. Many of us come in the home, we were, were too impatient. We want everything done now. You know, why can't I have this? Why can't I have my cell phone in 30 days? Talk to me, somebody. We come in with resentment. We come in with selfishness. Hatred, prideful, anger, rage, different forms of addictions, pettiness, laziness. My God, I'm talking to somebody. Maybe I'm talking to YouTube tonight. Amen, my God. 
He said, but you know, you, you got to understand that God, through your process and through what he's doing in your life, through his testing you, refining you, he's chipping them away. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? He said, I woke up this morning, but I'm not prideful today. Hey, I woke up this morning. I ain't selfish today, my God. I'm being refined and don't even know it. My God, help me, Holy Ghost. God said, trust me, I'm at work in you. It's amazing how God just encourages us to have faith when it seems like the Holy Ghost is not working in us. Come on, somebody. His spirit, when it actually is, when we don't think he's working in us, this Holy Spirit is working in you. Amen. But see, we can't see it because we're too busy remembering all the failures that we had done. Right. We're too busy reminding ourselves, I could have or I should have, or I could have did this. Well, the devil is a liar. You should have done it back then. You in a new place today. Amen. Come on, somebody. God, this process that God is doing in our lives is moving us to another level. Can I get an amen? amen. God said, trust me, I'm at work in you. How much easier it would be if we just stayed focused on him instead of our own imperfections. To the point of being blind to the great work he's doing in and through us. You see, sometimes God, you blind your own self. Because you're not allowing God to do what he's trying to do in your life. Amen. Yes, we accomplish some things. Amen. Brother Robert got his license. Got a bank account. Working for Amazon. Hey, got a new job. My God. Amen. But God is saying, now what you going to do for me? Are you going to stay with me? Are you going to walk with me? My God, I'm talking to somebody tonight. Yes, the process is grueling to leave our old self behind. Amen. But the outcome is more beautiful than we normally realize. Amen. Amen. And totally, it's totally worth it. The truth is to surrender and let him do his thing, endure and hold on to his promises. No matter what, when we face God, we will be made whole. Our addictions will be lifted. Our character defects will no longer be there because God says that I'm working in you. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm working in you, he said. Oh, I got to take you back to the scripture. My God, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me. He says, being confident of this, he who began a good work in you. Who, who started it? It's right there in the word. He said, he who began in you. God said, I started something good in you. He said, but now I'm going to take it. I'm going to keep it until it's completed. Amen. And y'all with me tonight? Can I hear an amen tonight? Amen. He said, he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Let him do his work. The process is to continue to be like Christ. To continue in this process no matter what it feels like. Know this. That he who began a good work in you, my God. Will carry it unto completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Now let me take you to verse 9. There's too much in this. Amen. He said, and this is my prayer. And this is me for you, brother Leonard. And all of the rest of y'all when y'all ready to leave the home and the church. The Bible says, and this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more. In the knowledge, depth of insight. Help me, Holy Ghost. So that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless on the day of Christ. What is he telling us? He says, and this is my prayer. He was telling them, Paul was telling them, he was telling them, this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in the knowledge and depth of insight. What is insight? Insight means an intuition, it's an awareness, it's being sharpness, amen? It means to, it means to have a vision, to be savvy. It means to be enlightened. It means to open up your eyes. He was praying, you know what? I, I want you to have insight of who you are. My God, I'm talking to somebody. What does insight mean? It means the capacity to gain an accurate and deep in, intuitive and understanding of a person. What is that telling us? 
God wants you to know who you are. He wants you to know the sharpness that you have. He wants you to be aware of where you are in your walk. Come on, somebody. He was telling them, he was praying for them. He said, so that you may discern. What does discern mean? It means to, re to realize. It means to spot out. It means to, to be aware of where you are. This is the discern that we that God wants us to have, to notice, to distinguish things that in your life that ain't right, to be aware of your character. Amen. Are y'all with me tonight? Yeah. He said in verse 11, he said, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, the glory and the praise of God. My God. Hallelujah. So how do we get through this process? Through the gospel and the word of Christ. Amen. Through the Holy Spirit. Through the glory and the praise of God. You see, you see, God wants to praise for your walk. He wants to praise for your achievements, Brother Lennon. Brother Robert. He wants to praise for it. That's why he said, I want, I want you to give me praise. Because as the Bible said here, praise belongs to Christ. Amen. Amen. The glory and praise of God, he said. Now, this is the ultimate goal of all that God does in believers, us. He's talking to us. Who have persevered to get to the end of our battles. And I say this because we're not there yet. Amen. He wants us to have the discernment. He wants us to have the insight. He wants us to say, okay, I want you to, first of all, have love. Because without love... You don't, you don't have nothing. Come on, somebody. You can have all you want, but without love, you ain't nothing. Amen. You don't have nothing. Come on, somebody. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. My God, help me, Holy Ghost. God is so good. You know, the process that God has given me tonight is where we are. What, what, what are we doing in life? What do I need to let go in life? You know, I know that Jesus can do all things. You know, but when we're going through this process, we got to call out on God. You know when Daniel got thrown into the lion's den. Amen. The Bible says that he waited on the Lord. He waited. He said he went to the Lord and he started praying. Can I take y'all there? My God, this is so deep in here. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said that he waited. He said he, he, he came to the Lord. And he told the Lord, Lord, I, I need your help today. I'm, I'm going through a process. He said, he said in Daniel, he said, so I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. In Daniel, verse 9, 3. See, Daniel's persistence in fasting and prayer is an important example of faith and trust in God. Brother Ricky was talking about trust. If we can't trust God, we can't make it through our process. We can't make it through life. Come on, church. Give him an amen tonight. Amen. 